The Urban Impact Show is sponsored by Green and Wood Media Services. Green and Wood uses digital media to help businesses, political campaigns, and organizations grow while increasing their community impact. Green and Wood Media is pleased to offer a digital media buying fellowship to train, develop, and mentor young people interested in digital media, politics, and advertising. Learn more at greenandwoodmedia.com. Black excellence, black beauty, and black pride. Black power from all diaspora was coincide. Progressive truth and regression eventually collide. May the beauty of the people no longer be set aside. May the black queen's grace continually mesmerize the millions who couldn't see it when looking into her eyes. And the black man's plight no longer be the disguise. Oppression, emasculation, they wanna castracize him. Take him away from the black queen, put him inside. Prison for slave labor, he institutionalized. Wondering on the outside, is she willing to ride? Is she willing to ride? Is she willing to fight for the love, even despite the fact that he doing time? Love that conquers all will never fade with time. If she don't choose the love that appreciates every life is flame. Hello and good afternoon. I'm your host, Joanna Bradley with the Urban Impact Show. We welcome, welcome, welcome you as we are on part five of talking about voting while black. We're really excited for our guests that we have today and we're not going to take too much time. We'll be getting to the conversation very shortly. But before we do that, I will have our hosts introduce themselves. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brittany Dudley. Um, excited to continue the conversation, Voting While Black. Um, this is the fifth episode, so we've been talking to a lot of candidates, getting everyone's opinion on um, voting during this time, and um, a lot of the candidates' passions behind voting. So I'm excited for today's conversation. Me too. I'm super excited today. <laughs> I'm excited to be with my two co-hosts yes. today. We don't see each other for a week. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Luana Nelson Brown, um, your last co-host for today, and I am so ready to talk about this topic. Yes. We've been talking to the candidates mostly about their platform and their yeah. issues. And then today we're gonna get to talk about their experiences. And this yes. is the show that I've been waiting for. So yeah. I can't wait for us to jump into it. All right, well, I just wanna give a shout out to Rob. We miss you, but you know, when the ladies are running things, everything's gonna go right. We miss you, Rob, but we look forward to seeing you next week. We got this. Yeah. So we are gonna take a short break and we will be back with our first guest. Welcome back to the Urban Impact Show. We are excited to have our first guest, Representative Ross Wilburn. He's going to share a little bit about his journey, a little bit more about who he is as he is serving currently right now as chair of the Iowa Democratic Party. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Thank you. So go ahead. Thank you. Okay. 
<laughs> Great. So uh, I'm Ross Wilburn, and I'm uh, honored to be the chair of the Iowa Democratic Party, as well as the state representative in Ames, Iowa. Uh, I've probably been in Ames about seven years, and um, I, what brought me to Ames from Iowa City was I was invited to apply for a position with Iowa State University Extension and Outreach as their diversity advisor, but I was in uh, Iowa City uh, before then and served as mayor, as the first uh, black mayor of Iowa City, Iowa. And uh, as our Vice President Kamala Harris likes to say, uh, first but not the last. In fact, the current mayor of Iowa City is African American, and since I was on city council, I was the second mm -hmm. African American on city council there, but um, oh, maybe four, uh, four or five have run, mm -hmm. and four have served, and the one who didn't uh, get elected is now a county supervisor mm -hmm. and the first black supervisor mm -hmm. in, uh, in Johnson County. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, my background is social worker as uh, with a master's in social work from the University of Iowa. I taught there for a little bit and youth work is what I really did. I, uh, for 10 years, I worked with runaway and homeless youth right. uh, and uh, doing substance abuse prevention and counseling, just getting them plugged into resources. And that's my orientation mm -hmm. to public service. I do view it as public service. Mm -hmm. And... Um, uh, you know, especially in that case with runaway and homeless youth, okay. uh, just making sure that uh, the mental health issues are, are taken care of and addressed and that any supportive resources, educational, health care, uh, that's all part of it. And so um, I, 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 I I cringe a little bit when folks say politics. I do try and approach it from public service, uh, but as chair of the Iowa Democratic Party, mm -hmm. it's important to realize that uh, you know the, the the personal is political, and that's the way to get the community engaged mm -hmm. uh, and uh, out to vote, which is uh, right. part of what you all are doing. Yes, yeah. that's right. That's exactly right. I already knew your background, so I appreciate <laughs> your telling our viewers so they can know because sometimes I don't think people know you know the long history that you've had. Um, and how you got to where you are today. So I like to ask the <laughs> the fun question. Okay. <laughs> We're just conversation, just regular conversation. And you mentioned mental health. And I'm curious, now you've run for several positions and won, so you've held several seats. But when you think back to when you were running for mayor of Iowa City and becoming the first black mayor mm -hmm. of Iowa City, what was how was your mental your mental health affected because um i know you have experience with youth and their mental health but being black becoming the first black mayor and running that campaign had to affect your mental health so how was your mental health affected and how did you deal with whatever came up let me go back to uh when i first ran for city council because i served that would have been first yeah right. yeah okay uh, so I, I served for 12 years in city council and again having been a um a youth worker mm -hmm. and going out to washington dc to advocate for for uh, policy and funding a reauthorization of the runway and homeless youth act was one of them um i, I just thought you know uh, working with congressional staff this is something i could do uh, i wasn't necessarily thinking of running for office at the time but uh, that's what kind of, you know, that's that uh, reinforcement that that's where the impact, if you want to be uh, to help uplift and empower individuals, then there have to be, um, you know, uh, supports for each other. Mm -hmm. And and as you know, legislation can can either help or harm that. Correct. And so, uh, it, you know, it was it was uh, I, I, I wouldn't say it was intimidating the first run because it was me and a group of my friends and family sitting around a table just like this. Right. to How can we get a campaign going? Yeah. Uh, so we really Really, it, it was a case where you know we didn't know what we didn't know, mm -hmm. uh, and so we weren't intimidated by by that. Right. But it was really just talking about issues and concerns, and sometimes people support you. Mm -hmm. um, in some ways, you get discounted right. uh, because uh, if you're not that well known in a community, you're only known by a certain segment of the community. Mm -hmm. Then um, uh, you know you're you're discounted. But I was. Um, uh, I didn't make it that first run, mm -hmm. and so, but I was approached because of the way I presented myself, the way I talked about issues and concerns and respected people that I had a difference with. Right. The city council invited me to uh, apply uh, to be on a board and commission for uh -huh. the city, and that, uh, so I did it, okay. uh, Parks and Recreation, and that's how I learned a little bit more about how uh, government operates on the inside. Okay. And so I ran a second time. Uh, I made it past a primary. I didn't make the first time, right. but uh, people encouraged me to run, and so uh, but I lost uh, that second time, and so uh, it was like third time's a charm, right. and uh, I was able to do it. 
but initially, uh, the, what brought me to, in addition to just that policy about, okay, let's go ahead and run mm -hmm. for office. I'm going to make sure I say this uh, <laughs> t uh, correctly because there was a, uh, a conservative uh, newsletter that uh, tried to uh, draw some type of reference or saying I was lying. Oh, uh, wow. When I was out in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. at the Lincoln Memorial, mm -hmm. there's that's where the I Have a Dream speech was. And I said that I was, you know, there standing on the spot. Well, the they tried to say, well, that monument, the placard where King gave the st speech was in existence. Like, no, you're correct. It wasn't. <laughs> right. But, uh, you know, I, I mean, I was born in 1964 mm -hmm. and all the black and white videos of right. all the speeches and marches and dogs and all that. Mm -hmm. I know where that area is, right? right? You can yeah, see. So, so I just want, yeah. So just kind of sitting there, that was where I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. And, mm -hmm. um, but, uh, the first time I, uh, that, uh, when I first got elected that mm -hmm. third, the third run, uh, I believe I won with about 60% of the vote. So it was that persistence and tried to build upon, uh, you know, people that, um, that we're supporting you and going from there. In fact, uh, a, a good story, and I'll, I'll stop so and get to the next question. Um, uh, there was a, a young man the first time I ran, one of my, one of my uh, clients, um, I won't say his name, but uh, he, he told me, he said, you know, a black man can't mm -hmm. get elected to office. I wow. said, well, yeah. I, I, you know, I said, mm -hmm. I don't know that until it happens. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and I said, and there had been one african-american on before it was just maybe about i don't know it was more than 10 years mm -hmm. and so um uh, i lost but the second time i ran i was running at large mm -hmm. and uh i could tell he was paying attention because he saw me and said oh so you're living large now huh right <laughs> and, you know so it, it was a conversation again yeah, he didn't yeah. know how it works right, yeah right. and so um <laughs> but then the, the third time i ran um that day mm -hmm. uh, he saw me on the street you know mr wilburn mr wilburn Today's my birthday. You just turned old enough to vote, and I voted for you. Aww. And just to that, you know, just to this yeah. day, I mean, I get, you know, I get kind of choked up about that. But it just shows if we pay attention and show interest in community and whether it's running for office or just trying to step forward with your community of faith or your neighborhood or school, right. uh, young people will pay attention to. Right. Yeah. I love that. Wait, I don't want to, yeah. I want to give Dwana a chance. Do you have a question before I jump in with a bunch of questions? No, I do have a question. Um, being a person that serves, you know, in a position right now and knowing that we've seen the news stories a few weeks ago about things that had happened and threats that you received, how do you you handle that being in office you know I think a lot of people you know we're excited when we have people of color who are in office but there are a lot of things that we go through that you know we may not necessarily tell the story about or shine the light on but we know those negative things happen how do you handle it and how do you address those things when they come at you right so this gets closer to my personal mental health right I so say you're, you're good you're good so um, you know uh, it's it's not uncommon for people of color, uh, whether it's elected office or just showing leadership, mm -hmm. to receive you know uh, you know racial slurs directed our way, email, phone call. Mm -hmm. uh, it's and you know we we just kind of well here we go again, yeah. right? We we try and normalize it because that uh, you know uh, to try and protect ourselves and so uh and over you over the years it does it is a drain but you do try and and i try and look at those who uh who understand who are trying to lift and who uh, regardless of race who are trying to have a positive impact on community mm -hmm. um but in this particular case on um on uh, October uh, 9th, I believe it was, uh, that's Saturday, uh, I had written a, a, a guest op in the Des Moines Register about Donald Trump and his visit, uh, calling Republicans, Republican leadership here in Iowa that, you know, are you going to stand by this guy who's been inciting uh, violence, including that against his own uh, vice president? Mm -hmm. Uh, on that on the insurrection day um, or are you going to try and stand with Iowans as we try and uh, fight for our American values and so that night I got the first of two phone calls from a uh, from a restricted number mm -hmm. uh, I hadn't answered it but so it went right to my voicemail mm -hmm. and it includes several racial slurs uh, the end word so again it's that okay here we go again yeah, right, uh, but right. then it ended with a reference to lynching right I'm not oh, gonna wow. I, I've got to be careful I don't want to 
disrupt the, any investigation, but right. that's what the reference was. And so uh, right away, I mean, I got angry about that. And, yes. you know, and it's, you know, it's, uh, I was uh, tired that way and so I slept well, but you know, you get up the next day, it's like, well, what am I going to do with this? And then a call came in from a restricted number, so I didn't answer it. Mm -hmm. And again, um, it's similar. There was no threat of, of reference to lynching, mm -hmm. but uh, the N-word uh, multiple times and some other racial slurs. And then the next day, Monday, I got an email with um, uh, no threats of or references to lynching, but you know some stereotypes and, and that type of thing. And so I just you know I've got to come forward with this. Uh, I look around at all the school board meetings and and forums and debates and city council. It's like until. Uh, until uh, the rest of us stand forward and say mm -hmm. this is going on because some people don't believe it right. uh, or realize it mm -hmm. and it's got to stop mm -hmm. and especially for our young people uh, if the only voices they are hearing are some of those in those t-shirts and the hats with hate and confederate flags mm -hmm. and all that going on at some of these rallies mm -hmm. uh, and or some of the school board uh, meetings uh, we know where you live and we're going to yes. stalk you mm -hmm. uh, until the rest of us come forward and say enough is enough mm -hmm. uh, you know those things are going to continue you know, it's important, especially for young people, to, to hear that. So, you know, you, you, you hug your family closer. You get, uh, you know, when I came forward, overwhelming amount of uh, support from friends and people I don't know from mm -hmm. Georgia and New York and California, which is great and uplifting. Yeah. But then uh, the other voices, you know, well, I'm uh, thinking of one email. Um, well, this has happened before, but you've never, you know, you've never filed a complaint. Then what, you know, why now? Does the N word hurt more now than it did, you know, back then? That's the, yeah. that's the inference. And so, uh, but again, you know, you, you just, um, um, uh, you know, don't let people steal. What's the expression? Don't let people t right. uh, take away your joy. Yep. Right. Your joy. Don't let them steal your exactly. joy. And so you just, uh, you know, uh, look with those who are wanting to improve the community and go forward from there. Not easy to do, but yeah. we got to do it. Yeah. yeah. And it's not easy to do, you know. Um, and as you said, you know, running for office, you get this as a community leader, we get this. Um, and I don't know that the the greater public really understands that this is a barrier that affects us and not others right you know mm -hmm. and so you know um i think it was y'all forgive me i'm gonna do a prince harry reference but <laughs> i think it was prince harry and oh my god what's her name megan, megan yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that said um racism is not the same as rudeness you know it's one thing you know when anybody's running for office they experience rude things mm -hmm. that's completely different though than experiencing references to lynching for example that's completely that's a completely different level mm -hmm. so my quick question unless we have to go to break no, we're okay. good yeah. um to divert just a little bit off is you mentioned until enough of us stand up you know and do something it's going to continue to happen and we we all have to come together to stop it so are there any plans now that you're head of democratic the iowa democratic party for the party to do something like what's happening with the iowa democratic party around the experiences of black candidates as they run for office well, uh, excellent question. Uh, not that the others weren't. Uh, you know, the I Democratic Party, we've got various constituency caucuses, uh, communities of color, uh, LGBTQ plus community, um, uh, older Iowans, um, uh, our veterans, disability caucus. And so uh, we've got some strong caucuses. And one, one of the things I've been trying to do is just trying to, uh, uh, you know, make sure that the only voice coming from the party with the media is not just me from the chair that our, and our, we've got strong constituency caucus leaders um, and they've been uh, very willing to come forward with some statements that we've tried to lift those up so that's one thing um, you know another thing uh, as a state party chair uh, you know I can't uh, endorse particular candidates because then I'm accused with uh, stacking the deck right, right. right rigging the system right. but we've provided training uh, to volunteers over the course of uh, the year uh, Iowa had uh, um, with the DNC, Iowa had uh, participated in a, a training uh, earlier in the year, was, uh, online, virtual, and uh, multiple weeks. And Iowa had uh, well over 100 participants in this activist training and whether you want to be a candidate or chair or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I believe, uh, you know, first Vice Chair Owens had said that um, uh, Iowa was 15th in terms of participation in that. So uh, okay. Iowans are wanting to get involved. And so the other thing we told them, now that you've got this training, yeah. 
uh, you know, the partisan elections aren't till next year. So find a Democrat who's running for office, mm -hmm. school board, city council, and go volunteer for their campaign. So those are a couple things mm -hmm. that are coming forward. But, uh, um, you know, I, I think it's uh, in terms of... Uh, responding to hate and those types of things. I think we're trying to put our, our brains together to figure out, you know, how can we partner with others so it's not viewed as, oh, this partisan thing. So regardless of whether you're Republican, Green, Libertarian, whatever it is, uh, and, and maybe it's not the parties that take leadership. Maybe it's the yeah. communities of faith. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the, um, uh, you know, uh, nonprofit, mm -hmm. uh, NAACP, LULAC, you know, yeah. whoever it might be. But so just trying to keep our eyes towards towards that. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. I got one more question. I know that our time is winding down and coming to a close but one thing that we've been doing here on the urban impact show is really um wanting our viewers to go out and vote and i and, and i hear this all the time of well why should i vote my vote doesn't matter i'm just one person but what do you say to our voters because we really want to encourage the vote and why it's important to vote Absolutely. Uh, just sticking with, you know, kind of the areas where we touched on about hate. Um, and if you're concerned about, um, you know, some of the legislation that came out of yes. the Iowa legislature, which the governor signed. I mean, yes. you uh, you don't even have to talk about party, but look at which party has the power to, to, to mm -hmm. stop that or not. And, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, we had, um, you know, uh, a unanimous vote in the House and Senate, uh, the more perfect union bill to, you know, uh, reduce, trying to eliminate, uh, forbid certain chokeholds, uh, training, cultural competency training, diversity training for law enforcement, and some other items. Well, the very next year, this year, uh, instead of uh, a promise from the governor to, uh, well, let's take a look at racial profiling, what can we do w with that? Uh, put that aside despite a promise and came out, uh, she signed a bill that's, um, um, you know, gives immunity to someone who hits someone who's protesting with their vehicle, mm -hmm. whether, you know, and there may not be a requirement for them to, to ask for that space. They may be legally in that space, right. but you've got qualified immunity. Mm -hmm. The other thing is the bill to make it harder to vote. Yep. Um, you know, I've, I, uh, the early voting has been going, the period of time has been shrunk, and uh, I wanted to go vote yesterday. That was my plan, make a plan to vote. Uh, <laughs> uh, and so, um, about uh, 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 an hour or two hours before it was going to close, I stopped by uh, the library in Ames. Well, uh, the line had been long, all day long, and I stood in line for 30 minutes, but I had to get down to Des Moines for a meeting. Uh, so I stood in line for 30 minutes, and I asked, the, you know, the kind of the person in line who was kind of keeping be uh, folks, um, you know, moving forward, mm -hmm. you got about another... 15 minutes yeah. and I, I just had to leave so I couldn't wow. vote right wow. uh, because of you know, I made a plan right. and it was early yes. uh, but those are the types of barriers that uh, uh, are, can be put in place and we were told don't worry this is you know trying to eliminate some type of fraud that there's no has no proof of any type of systemic fraud mm -hmm. and it's been the Republican Party that has put that forward right. so uh, that's th those are just a couple quick examples of, of uh, just trying to vote uh, right. barriers put up or trying to it doesn't even have to be a protest you know if it's if you're at a community event and you're there wearing support for um you know pride or mm -hmm. or hispanic heritage month whatever it might be mm -hmm. uh and you've got signs and someone who yeah. doesn't yeah. like that going hit you they've got qualified immunity so that makes a difference and you you know it, it does make a difference to vote in fact um there are a couple cities in Iowa where, uh, you know, uh, I'm thinking of Hills, Iowa, years back, right? Hills, Iowa, the, the election for mayor was a tie. They didn't have a provision to have a tiebreaker. They literally drew the name of the mayor yep. out of, I was told it was a coffee can. Okay. It was a coffee. I was told by one of the mayors. I don't, to this day, don't know it was Hills, Iowa. There used to be a coffee. It may still, it called Hills Brothers. I have no idea if it was a Hills Brother well, coffee maybe. can. But, uh, but, I mean, the point being, uh, you know, uh, a flip of the coin, right. pulling it out of a hat, that has a direct impact on you, uh, your school, your family, yeah. uh, your health, your mental health, your job. Yeah, right. That's why we have to vote. Make a plan to vote. Get out and do it. Bring a friend. Um, I'd like for them to register as a Democrat, but <laughs> vote. Register to vote and, and have your voice be heard that way. Mm -hmm. All right.
That is probably the best um, reasoning I've ever heard <laughs> to get people to vote. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. Are we headed to break? Yes, we are. All right. So we are going to take a quick break. You're here with Dewana Luana and Representative Wilburn. We'll be right back on the Urban Impact Show. The Urban Impact Show is sponsored by Green and Wood Media Services. Green and Wood uses digital media to help businesses, political campaigns, and organizations grow while increasing their community impact. Green and Wood Media is pleased to offer a digital media buying fellowship to train, develop, and mentor young people interested in digital media, politics, and advertising. Learn more at greenandwoodmedia.com. And welcome back to the Urban Impact Show. I'm your co-host, Luana Nelson-Brown. And sitting next to me is not Ross Wilburn. <laughs> <laughs> sitting next to me is Tiara Mays running for Johnston School Board. And of course, my co-host, Brittany. Welcome back, everybody. Um, just shortly, we'll have Tiara talk to us about her run for Johnston School Board. I'm really excited to meet you and really excited you are running. My son has been in Johnston School District since kindergarten, so it will be really good to have some black representation on our school board. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank y'all for having me again. I'm <laughs> glad to be back. So my name is Tiara Mays. I am running for a position on the Johnston Community School District Board um, in Johnston, Iowa. I grew up in the Des Moines area. Um, I went to Des Moines Public Schools. I graduated from East High School. And after I left East, I played basketball at DMACC. And then I went to Iowa State University. And um, I have a degree in psychology and an MBA. Um, my professional background is in healthcare with a little bit of um, financial services mixed in there. Um, I get bored. I like to try stuff, so. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> which is why I'm sitting here today. So, right. um, and outside of that, uh, my, my true passion really is, is to serve. Um, and so I serve in a multitude of capacities within the community um, with investing in my future, uh, the Red Cross of Central Iowa. Um, I am a contributor for Autism Parenting Magazine. Uh, my, my own son he is autistic and so I, I wrote my first article with them in 2019 and they keep rerunning it I think the last time they republished it was just this past August um and so I'm fortunate for that. And because of that article, I get the opportunity to consult with a lot of different mothers across the country. And I just, I talk to them about, you know, how to get services for their children, wherever their child is at. I also sit in with parents with IEP meetings and 
I just set aside some time on my Saturdays to do that. So yeah, I love it. You didn't shout out your sorority. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am also a member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. So I'm the president of the New Mu Zeta chapter here in Des Moines. Um, yep. So I, I love my my Zeta. I joined that when I was at Iowa State University. So I have been a member for 12. Yes, 12 years. Mm -hmm. oh, 12 years. Okay, all right. And you all know that I live in the Johnson School District because you've heard me say, so Tiara and I know each other. We've been, you know, talking to each other a lot and we're both parents of um, sons with autism. So, yeah. but today's topic, we want to talk about the hate, right, that you've received. And this is your first time running for office. Yes, this yeah. is my first time running for office. And um, it, it's been a good experience so far, for the most part. There's been a lot of support. Um, but there's a very loud minority of people that want to bring the experience down. So mm -hmm. how, um, how have you coped with that? Because I know you've received hate mail. Um, I don't know that there's been any negative press like that, but I know there's been um encounters and yeah. and other negative things all racially motivated mm -hmm. all race-based how have you handled that and how have you um worked with your family around that as well sure so yeah the first the first instance was an email that i received um you know a couple n words a couple b words you know and uh I'm grateful I was with my family when I got that one mm -hmm. and they were really that that was my first focus when I decided to run I kind of expected it and that's so terrible to say mm -hmm. but as you know as you were talking with um Russ about you know that's a barrier for us but I think when you put your name in the hat you expect it mm -hmm. um still nonetheless I was worried about my family because I had made my decision mm -hmm. it was putting them in harm's way and that's what it was the realization that okay our lives are not going to be the same for for a while yeah. yeah um that that's the part that scared me and a few weeks went by after that first one where everything was just kind of you know they had calmed down and then i got another one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and at that point i decided not to publicly you know state that i was that i received another one and then around that time i was starting to put yard signs out and there were a few times where i was i delivered all of my yard signs so no one can say that i have violated any ethics stuff i had permission from everyone right. for the yard signs mm -hmm. um and as i delivered as i was delivering my yard sign somebody screams out you know the n-word as they're driving driving by and mm -hmm. so there was that instance and then 40 of my yard signs just disappeared what yeah. i didn't know that like out, of, out of yards or like you um and they were being delivered from a union printer in florida mm -hmm. and fedex said they delivered them and um nowhere to be found and so uh, we just we let that go mm -hmm. they showed up this week what so and someone brought them back. <laughs> somebody brought them back i'm like a week before so my you know my intuition saying that someone had taken them and i couldn't prove it mm -hmm. or anything like that but they showed up you know uh late in the evening on sunday night or I pull out my my garage and there they, there are. they are yeah and you know what that's another thing too that i don't think people realize is when things like that happen mm -hmm. that you can't prove you you have an inkling or a mm -hmm. feeling you know for um a lot of people it's just oh well it's an inkling or a feeling but for us it goes so much deeper right because you have to wonder then you know was that racially motivated yeah. or mm -hmm. not and so that's a whole different struggle with your mental health yeah right? yeah yeah definitely. so i've been with it i've i've talked to my family um the last few days has probably been the harshest um there's a lot of trolls that are coming out we're getting closer to the election mm -hmm. one of my um sign last night our kids were trick-or-treating and so one of my supporters she let me know that her sign was forcibly kicked down and bent up and stuff and mm -hmm. So it, it it's things like that. And I just I can just I consistently talk with my mother, um, my grandmother. She's told me not to quit. So I can't. <laughs> <laughs> nope. uh, she, grandma said I got to go. So um, and just, uh, you know, I, I have a psychology degree. I believe in therapy. I believe in speaking with others, um, an unbiased party about what I'm going through. So I do go to therapy weekly just to kind of 
unleash everything, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and she doesn't mind me crying and yelling and expressing how I feel about it. Right. Um, it's one thing to consistently, you know, all on social media, there's this picture of me smiling and I look like, you know, mm -hmm. a, a force to be reckoned with. Well, I decided that when you've got people coming at you all day, right. it, it, get, it wears on you. Yeah, and that's right. the honest truth. Right, right. I'm glad that you said that because it does. It does wear on you, you know, when you have to deal with it day in, day out. Mm -hmm. It's like death by a thousand paper cuts, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Go ahead, Brittany. Um, and, and this right now, it, before election is the beginning, once you do get elected you know how do you plan uh, you go to therapy but how do you plan to like continue to kind of fight off some of those things like you know your purpose you know while you while you're here and the impact that you can make what are some ways that you plan to kind of i guess in, when you encounter some of those things get through it your, with your mental health um the one thing that i have decided is to no longer keep it a secret yeah. i think it more it it, it, it's a better statement so that the community can see it's not in our imagination. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I think that is actually what a lot of people think is, is that the world is not this racist place that we want to make it. And it has to be highlighted, even if that means that I have to put myself in an uncomfortable position. Mm -hmm. But also, the, now that I've made that decision, I've realized that there are so many allies that I do have. I barely have to say anything yeah, on my yeah. own personal page. They, they are. Mm -hmm. And that's the real comforting part is, is that they're, you know, whomever is doing this, they're loud. They're making a lot of noise. But um, there is a lot of support out there and I, I, I really don't have to say anything much. I just kind of sit back and let those people that know that I always come from a place of love and that's how I plan on mm -hmm. combating this is, and that's how I live my personal life. I don't have drama. I don't deal with, you know, disagreements like that. I am going to smile, hug you and we're going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And ultimately if they have a problem with who I am, that's going to be on them. And I'm just going to continue to say, I want to support everyone. Mm -hmm. I want to, I, I'm coming from a place of love and quite frankly, running for a position on the school board, this is for the kids. Yeah. And we know that these kids, sometimes the only time that they're ever even going to get a reference of how to love other people in differences mm -hmm. is going to be outside of their homes. Mm -hmm. And that's how we have to kind of, that that's going to keep me motivated because if I'm the only example that they have of how to treat somebody, I'm okay with that. Yeah. I love that. That's I love awesome. that you said that. I love that answer because ultimately it really is, is about, you know, how we treat each other as human beings, yeah. right? That's the core of everything that we're talking about. And school board really is about the kids, mm -hmm. not us, right? right? So I have one more quick question. <laughs> um, when you first started running, so, so in Johnson, for those of you all that don't know, um, we've gotten national attention, yeah. the school board race has, because there is an opportunity to flip our board um, from one ideology to the next. Now, the school board's nonpartisan, so I can't say one party to the next, but one ideology to the next. Mm -hmm. And so one of those seats are this one of the seats that you're running for. When you first decided to run, did you know ahead of time that it would become um, this important? Did you know how important this election was? <laughs> no, no, I did not. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't. And this is, you know, I'm, I'm running now, but the first instance that I wanted to run was in 2019. Mm. And funny enough, I was cleaning out my garage a couple of weeks ago and I, I, I saw my nomination forms from 2019 mm -hmm. and I was cleaning it out with my mom and she was like, that's the reminder you needed that you needed to do this. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I really, I'm a faithful person and I, I've shied away a little bit in this campaign from really professing, you know, that I am, I'm a religious woman and I, uh, I, I go to church faithfully, but honestly it was an act of obedience. I stayed up for about 72 hours before I actually made that Facebook post saying that I was going to run. Mm. And it was, it was almost like I could hear someone saying, do it right. just right. do it i built right. a website I, I came up with my ethics and um, disclosure committee name got my ein I, I just all the things it's like everything lined up perfectly in front of me to be able to do it right. i've never done anything like this before i had google and a smile 
Oh, <laughs> <I> love it. <laughs> when you know it's meant to be. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're so easy and kind of they flow. Yeah. Right. E everything really did line up. So no, I did not know how impactful this this election was going to be. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say that I do feel as though once two black women decided to run. A lot of other people decided to follow. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, I'll, I'm going to leave it at that. But <laughs> Right. Okay, I'm going to let you leave it at that. But I'm not going to leave it at that because, you know, we've got folks running. Um, oh, this is hard not to overstep. But we've got folks running, you know, for these the same seats that you and, and Leah Williams, the other black woman who's running, um, they're vying for those same seats and yeah. they're running on equity. Mm -hmm. However, you know, the goal of equity is to ensure representation, right? And so I don't know if you don't have to answer this, if it, <laughs> but um, what would you say um, when people have an opportunity to put their power, their resources, um, and their privilege behind candidates that are truly representative of marginalized communities and instead they choose to run themselves. <laughs> yeah. You do not have to answer them. You don't you, want to. What, what I will say to that, and to be honest, I, I mentioned that to them. It's not, I, it's not a secret. I, I said this to them. So, you know, um, Yes, there. it would have been nice to have an easier path to victory, especially knowing them and <laughs> spending time with them in the past few months. Um, do I believe that they really want equity within the district? Yes. yes I was there a missed mark? Yes. Yes, agreed. Yeah, yes, there was. Um, and, that's, and, and that's okay. Um, you know, that's what I want us to, that's why I'm so passionate about having diversity on the board and in a multitude of places because there are missed marks sometimes and we have to really acknowledge that and own it. Yeah. Um, the three, the other three candidates that are running, you know, <sighs> <laughs> the ones that signed the 1776 pledge yeah, yeah. that um so the 1776 pledge what i'm going to say about that is you know the 1776 commission that donald trump had mm -hmm. You know, it's a major justification for the missed marks that our country had. That's a really good way of putting that. I love that. Okay, yep. continue. I, I interrupt. It, it, Sorry. It was missed marks. And what I really have been trying to state in my campaign is, is that right is right, wrong is wrong. Right. Equity does not mean equal. Right. If you can't defend Ted Bundy killing multiple women, you can't defend our founding fathers having slaves. You, you can't defend it. It was wrong. I don't care what they tried to write in this report. Right. Why, you know, that it was something done around the world. Mm -hmm. It was wrong. Right. And it's okay to say that the founding fathers that created this standing document that has stood the test of time mm -hmm. missed the mark. Right. Move on from it. But for them to go and sign a pledge and not acknowledge the fact that there are certain populations that have not had the same benefit as our founding fathers would have had you know throughout this country it's disrespectful disrespectful exactly thank you for saying that yeah no i was just saying that was a very good way of, of putting it and um you know i think a lot of the things that you said today are things that african-american candidates do go through and it needs to be acknowledged so i appreciate you guys for acknowledging it today and um you know just excited to see where the race ends and that where it takes you thank yeah. you yeah so lastly where can people reach you yep. and give your information because the vote your last chance yes. to vote is november 2nd if you need a ride let me know yes <laughs> yes so november 2nd is the is the day um you can reach me on facebook my campaign page <laughs> is tiara mays for johnston on facebook that is also my website tiara um tiara mays for johnston.org um 
yeah, th those are the best ways to to reach me, and I emphasize my campaign page because I, you know. Yes. Yeah. You <laughs> don't want people reaching out on your personal page. Yep. Page. yep. Absolutely. And I can talk back on my personal page. All on my right. campaign page, I cannot. So. <laughs> exactly. So we highly suggest go to the campaign page. Keep it ethical, and I'll call you at home. But. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much, you. Tiana, Thank for coming you. and being with us. And on Tuesday, do you have plans for an you know, after party? On Tuesday, I'm going to be at my mother's house. We are going to have a little taco bar. I, you know, at eight thirty, we'll see what happens, what the results are. If I need some place to just decompress for a second, mm -hmm. and then after that, we're probably going to like you know go celebrate or do whatever. I, I have some news, but you know, I'll wait on Tuesday to. To go okay. with that. So. Okay, now I'm on the edge of my seat, and I know y'all are too. <laughs> Tuesday will be a celebration no matter what. Okay. So, okay. Really. so we're going to go to break so I can pry out of TR what this news <laughs> is, and then you all will find out on Tuesday. We want to know some brown with the Urban Impact Show. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Urban Impact Show, and we have come to the time where we are preparing to come to a close. But I just want to get my co-host reactions from everything you've heard. We've had some really great mm -hmm. guests today who have provided some wonderful information about their personal experiences, which I think is so powerful mm -hmm. to be able to hear the personal experiences 
of, of people. So I'm going to pass it over to you, Luana, and just share your thoughts about what you've heard today. Thank you, Duana. Well, you know, I always have thoughts. <laughs> and if Rob will tear, you'd say, I'm take too long to tell him. Um, but what was really impactful to me today is hearing not only um, the treatment that's received while running, but the barriers to run yes. in the first place, yeah. right? Like you heard Tiara, and she didn't go into great detail, mm -hmm. um, but talk about how um, she had the paperwork filled out in 2019, yeah. mm -hmm. preparing to run in 2019, and then running into barriers then mm -hmm. and um, representative Wilborn talked about the barriers that he ran into, you know, in, in preparing to run. Mm -hmm. And so um, for, for black candidates in particular, I know that we typically run because there is an issue, yeah. right? Um, there's a need, there's something that needs to be changed. No one else is changing it. And so mm -hmm. we decide to run. Um, and so even getting to that point, takes a lot yeah. right they just get into you you're frustrated by the time you get to that point and then you run into barriers mm -hmm. and then you run and then you have more hate mm -hmm. you know it's it's a lot it's literally like death by a thousand paper mm -hmm. cuts and i don't think people realize how much of a marathon our candidates are running mm -hmm. even before they become candidates yeah. mm -hmm. so the, that was what really stuck mm -hmm. out and was impactful to yeah. me today mm -hmm. how about you Britt? i think that like I'm, I'm with you like listening to tiara's story and, and different things it's like it as African Americans, we always have to overcome so much adversity in anything we do to the point where it's kind of exhausting sometimes because it's like we have these great, <clears throat> excuse me, these great candidates and why is their experience different? You know, we interviewed a lot of white candidates a few, you know, the past few weeks and <clears throat> they're just, the stories are just kind of different, you know, and it's just like, it's exhausting. Like, why do we always have to go through that? But, you know, I think that that just kind of shows like who we are we always overcome them um so i'm just excited to see like after november 2nd you know yeah. who's going to be in office and the great things that they're going to do my son's in johnston school district so mm -hmm. i'm happy to see african-american representation especially as he gets older mm -hmm. going through middle school and then you know on to high school We're, we need that support Absolutely. you know so i'm Absolutely. excited to see. yeah because um the two black women running will be the first black candidates mm -hmm. on that board mm -hmm. if they win these seats yeah so, how about you duana well, you know, when I hear these things, it always reminds me of my own experience oh, yeah. running for school board mm -hmm. and um, feeling very similar to Representative Wilburn and Tara. She's shared, you know, her own experiences. Mm -hmm. And it was funny when she said in 2019 that, you know, she was looking at the paperwork and didn't run. Mm -hmm. That was in 2019 where I was, my daughter was pushing me to run and mm -hmm. I didn't want to run. Mm -hmm. uh, she was, she was pushing me to run. I didn't want to run. I did uh, get appointed to the board, mm -hmm. but I think, you know, it's the thing that you bring up it always is harder for us yeah. and it really shouldn't mm -hmm. have to be that way. You know, we are human beings and individuals, you know, seeking one of the same things for our children yep. as anybody else wants for yeah. them. But we have to go through these extra hurdles. Mm -hmm. And every time something would happen to me on the board, the first question I had to ask was, is it because of the color of my yeah. skin? Why? And that gets exhausting yeah. to have to ask yep. that question over and over again. Well, did you do it because I was black? Or then to add another layer to it, did you do it because I was a woman? Yep. Right. So now right. you know you're adding a whole nother those are all things that. that we do experience. Yeah, those are the things that we experience. So um, I can remember during COVID um, being actually my whole family was put on display. Mm -hmm. uh, my son, who attends a private institution, was put on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, my daughter, who attends Iowa State, was put there and my family was put there. They didn't ask me put there, but because they were mad at the decisions that I made and they call us names that I will not repeat yeah. on this show. That's awful. But my son, you know, 15 years old is scared, wondering, mom, if I go to school, is someone going to come at me? Because what does he have to do with exactly. this? Exactly. You know? And that's my point is, mm -hmm. I can take anything that you want yeah. to bring towards me. Bring it to me all day long. I have big skin. But when you include my family mm -hmm. and my children, who didn't ask for this? Yeah. We've got a huge problem. Mm -hmm. So people must realize we are human beings with mm -hmm. thoughts, emotions, and yeah. feelings. We're doing this because we want the same thing. We want great public mm -hmm. schools. We want our kids to have a great education. And we we have the right yeah. to be able you. to, you know, put our names out there mm -hmm. so that we can be on a board or yeah. so that we can be in the legislature. We or shouldn't be penalized though. No, or, we know. should not be penalized. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, just hearing their stories, just 
reminded yeah. me of my own journey that I've gone through in this mm-hmm. position and how people are just really cruel, but they're cruel because they're looking at me at the color of my skin. And that's just kind of elevating, you know, kind of their meanness. Yeah. And so I'm hoping that as we continue and go on and educate people, you know, those kinds of things will change. Absolutely. But I greatly did appreciate having, you know, our guests today to be able to have those conversations with us. So we're at the point now where we're going to wrap things up. So I just want to hear from you all. Final thoughts. We've done this five times. I know know, that five shows committed to voting and the importance of it. So Luana, I'll just have you share your final thoughts. So final thoughts, thank you first for sharing your story. Yeah, that was brave. Your personal story. Yep. I think sometimes we forget that you sit on the yeah. board <laughs> right now and is, have experienced exactly these things. Mm-hmm. Um, my final thoughts actually are going to be just a shout out to uplift yeah. some of the black women mm-hmm. in Iowa that are running for Absolutely. right now. Yep. Um, because we're human beings first and we need to maintain their human dignity Mm -hmm. and lift them up and shout out so shout out to tiara yes running for school board shout out to leah leah williams Mm -hmm. also running for school board Mm -hmm. shout out to indira running for des moines city council shout out i know you have experienced hey girl Mm -hmm. shout out to athena gilbreth Mm -hmm. in davenport Mm -hmm. running for mayor Mm -hmm. and i know there are many many more of you but these are women who have um touched me in a special way sure um and and when i'm feeling down and i'm getting hate these are some of the women and shout out to you Mm Dewana. right these are some of the women um that support me and that's why i shout them out today so love to you guys that's literally my final thought is sending love to y'all Uh, my final thoughts is November 2nd is right around the corner so make sure you guys go vote you know go vote we, we try to educate you these past few weeks get you the resources and things that you need so let's make sure you go vote um, before November 2nd yeah Yes, and I just want to give a shout out to Terry Caldwell Johnson too. She's on the board with me and she's running. She's going to be on the board. So we're excited to have her again um, to share her expertise and bring, you know, her historical context to our board, which is really going to be great. So want to give a shout out to her. And I just I forget to, one person. Yeah, go ahead. Who'd you forget? Mary Wells. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yes. Mary Wells is running for a uh, folk uh, treasure. 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 Yeah. treasure. Yes. We hope to have her on a future show. Yes. Mary, Sora, if you're listening, we want to talk to you on the Urban Impact Show. So we hope to get you um, on the show to talk to us. Well, oh, and Deidre this year oh, yes. is running for governor. Let's not forget about our sister Deidre. Yes. So. And we will be talking to on a future show, just so you all know that. We'll have a conversation with her. So we want to uplift her as she is on the journey of um, becoming our next governor yeah. for and Iowa. And she would have called me and, and said some words. Hey, yeah. you not <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so you know we are just thankful for everyone who is really yeah. being courageous at this time. Absolutely, it is a it's challenging brave. time. We, we've come out of you know George Floyd, mm-hmm. and you know, and I. It doesn't matter. No matter what there is a different pressure on black folks yes. and and we don't want to have that conversation because it makes us uncomfortable mm-hmm. and we don't really want to go down that road but it is different for us we mm-hmm. experience things different than um those who don't look like us mm-hmm. who's going on this journey so i want to give a shout out to anyone who has put their name out there if yes. you're considering it please 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 do because you are wanted and we need you and to everyone listening to this show or you go back and listen to this later your vote is needed i say this all the time your vote counts and your vote matters Mm -hmm. if you don't vote you could be in the same story that representative wilborn shared with us when he said there was a tie and they literally had to yes. draw the name out of the coffee can. That's unreal. We don't want to have to experience nope. anything like that here. We want to make sure that the candidates that you have seen or who you've educated yourselves about, go out and vote for them. We care about you. You are valued. You are appreciated. And here at the Urban Impact Show, we want you to live your best lives. So we thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you. And next week. We are bringing the kids to the table. Yes. So the little kids are going to come and share with us. You know what? The big folks have been making all the decisions <laughs> for them. And right. so we want to hear from them about how what they feel about COVID to being in school to what they want to be when they grow up. So we're going to change everything come November. And the little kids are going to be at the table with us. And we are excited about that. It's going to so be thank good. Thank you again. <laughs> yes. For joining us on the Urban Impact Show. Take care. Have a good night, everybody.